Hello guys, welcome to another video dedicated to help you break out of any toxic patterns or behaviors in your personal or relationship life. In this video, we're going to be diving into attachment styles, but specifically the anxious preoccupied attachment style. Now, before I dive into this video, I do want to add a reminder that our attachment style does come from our childhood. So what we saw, what we heard, and what we experienced growing up from ages 0 to 8, as well as any traumatic experience later in life as well. So please do not blame, shame, or guilt yourself for any patterns or behaviors that might be discussed in the rest of this video. Now, the anxious preoccupied attachment style is all also known as the love addict because a lot of anxious attachment styles fall so intensely in love and they feel so much. In fact, a lot of anxious attachment styles usually derive a lot of their needs in the romantic relationship and so you start to see their other areas of lives start to fall down or not be as productive. And so a lot of anxious preoccupies usually take breakups to another level of hurt because they put so much significance in the relationship that when they leave the relationship, they almost feel as if they're having a quote-unquote identity crisis because a lot of their identity and significance was placed in the relationship. Now, in romantic relationships, a lot of anxious preoccupieds also have a subconscious expectation that their partner is supposed to fulfill every single one of their needs and their partner is responsible for how they feel. So whenever they're feeling anxious or want to self-soothe, they always go to their partner, which can actually be really straining in a relationship dynamic because we want to be able to self-soothe ourselves and also be there for ourselves. I do want to note that we all have a percentage of each of the other attachment styles so we can also be a little bit secure, anxious, dismissive, whatever it is, right? And so it really depends on the relationships that we're in as well and what behaviors and strategies we might exhibit. Now, a lot of anxious preoccupieds also puts their partner on a pedestal and they usually have a low self-esteem as well. And because of this, they also may tend to seek constant reassurance from the relationship. Now, anxious attachment styles are also extremely hypervigilant as well, but they're more so, unlike the FA, hypervigilant about other people's tone, body language, um, actions for anything, they're more so hypervigilant for whenever there is distance in a relationship. Because they hold the biggest wound of fear of abandonment, whenever there is distance in a relationship, they try to pull as close as they can because they fear that distance. Now, a lot of their activating strategies that they exhibit of calling constantly, texting constantly, always wanting to be close with their partner, and whenever there's distance, they're anxious, they may even feel guilty because they know that some of their behaviors that they're exhibiting isn't as healthy. Something else that generally anxious preoccupieds do is fantasize to get their needs met if their needs aren't getting met in the relationship. So they might think about what they wish their partner was like or what they wish the future is going to look like, their partner's potential, all of those things. And then because they think that their partner is doing the same thing to them, they start to feel guilty and they start to feel a little bit upset as well. But we want to be cognizant and communicate our, if our needs aren't getting met. And we also want to be aware that, you know, not every other attachment style exhibits the same behaviors or strategies. And so a lot of times they are not usually fantasizing as much as the anxious preoccupieds are. Anxious preoccupieds are also extremely codependent and clingy and so a lot of times they may people please in order to, you know, draw close to their partner and get their partner's approval and constantly be in contact with their partner. And they feel as if they're also responsible for making their partners happy um, and they're responsible for the partner's feelings as well. But the truth is we're not responsible for our partner's happiness and at the end of the day we can't fulfill every need that our partner has because we want that inter interdependence as well. And it's more healthy when we can get our own needs met and we can have a balance in our different areas of lives, except getting the needs met all in one area. The last common behavior in romantic relationships that anxious preoccupies have before we move on to the general characteristics is that anxious preoccupies usually experience limerence and infatuation throughout all phases of the relationship. So commonly, a lot of times people experience infatuation in the beginning of the relationship because that's the honeymoon phase. In the honeymoon phase, we are experiencing a lot of new things, right? So we want to stay close to our partner and we want to, you know, explore it with each other, right? 
but for the anxious preoccupied they experience limerence in the rest of the other stages as well and they may see these as sparks or butterflies but in actuality it's the anxiousness that is coming up from the fear of abandonment and i just wanted to add in this reminder that a lot of these behaviors and patterns that i just discussed is coming from a place of innocence and wanting to protect your fears wounds or any other hurt that you're dealing with inside relationships right and so it definitely doesn't justify these behaviors but understanding them can be so important in being able to heal and thrive and move away from these patterns so please don't blame shame or guilt yourself for exhibiting any of these behaviors but instead come from a place of accountability and let yourself know that you know these are behaviors that stemmed up and came up because i was trying to protect myself and i didn't know any better but i'm now taking those steps to heal and you know really overcome these obstacles that i'm facing now let's talk about the general characteristics of the anxious preoccupied attachment style not only in relationships now i do want to highlight that these are general characteristics and so if you don't experience or have all these characteristics that is completely fine because we all experience different things growing up one, generally anxious preoccupied are always in romantic relationships and if they're not in romantic relationships, you usually see them tend to jump from one relationship to another because they really dislike um, being lonely and being alone from that fear of abandonment. Two, rejection from their partner or other people can hurt a lot because they usually derive a lot of their connection needs, which are super, super important to them through other people and through their romantic relationships. And so when they're rejected, they feel as if their needs are being taken away from them as well. Three, anxious preoccupied usually assume that everyone wants the same amount of attachment as they do. Now, because anxious preoccupied don't like being alone, you might see them four, constantly be with people and surrounded by coworkers, and five, people please overgive or overcompensate because they want that closeness and they fear that abandonment. Now, anxious preoccupieds are also extremely friendly, outgoing, and charming, and they love to bond with other people. They're also known as hopeless romantics, and they really love to fantasize about their fairy tale relationship. Now, that is the end of the video for the general characteristics of the anxious preoccupied attachment style in their romantic relationships and in their personal life, right? And so if you are here at the end of the video watching this, I want to say that I'm proud of you for taking those steps in order to heal and be aware of your patterns so you can grow from them. So you're definitely on the right track and keep going. And if you resonated with any of these common behaviors and patterns, feel free to comment and share um, because we're all trying to grow together and it's good to know that you know you're not alone but as always you got this